So when do you know you need to fix the bearings of your triple arm clamp? You can definitely feel right now when I'm moving it without a wheel on it that it has a very very interesting snag on it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the triple, uh, triple arm clamp off. The first thing you're going to notice is that this is a quite a big nut and if you just have average tools you're not going to have the right wrench for it. But I have this which works really really well. So I'm going to put it in here and just loosen it up. And there it is, the nut is coming off. And with the knot off, the top of the triple clamp should slide out. With the top off, you have this little washer that comes off, and then there's a nut over here that uh, it's actually the nut that creates the pressure between the bearings over here. So this is an, uh, a, a nut that is very, very important to be torqued properly. What I'm gonna do, I'm gonna take it off right now. Uh, once it's off, uh, the, the bottom of the triple arm uh, will fall out. In my case, um, it's so dry that it won't fall off, so you could tap on the top to, dro to, to drop it and there it is. You're going to have a bearing on top which is going to come off under this seal. So this is one of the bearings on top and there is a track over here that uh, you have on top and this bearing basically travels on this trap and this is where the part of it gets usually rusty or snaggy. Also you're going to have a, a bearing towards the bottom which is going to be exactly the same situation. These need to be cleaned and greased. And this is where the cool stuff comes along on my channel versus other channels. If you ask any kind of manufacturer in this world, do I have to replace those bearings? They will tell you yes, because their business is to sell you bearings. Fear is one of the big driving factors that people just put new stuff in the buy. What if it locks up? What if it doesn't work? And now people will ask, what kind of a grease I'm going to use? And here's the truth, whatever grease I have in here, People will say, well, you have to use the most magical grease in the world that you pay $17 a bucket because it's the best thing in the world. When in essence, these bearings move very little. All you need is just a little bit of a grease. What kind of a grease I have? I don't know. It's yellow. So this is going to be good, as good as it gets. Every person that freaks out about the smallest thing in the world, in my view, it's just a big pussy indoctrinated by a system that is designed to sell you all the time all the things in the world when other people get away with absolute murder which is what I'm doing right now if everybody would be logical like I am America would disappear it couldn't exist the way that it is right now this little carbon deposit will absolutely freak out an average guy and they will run for the hills right now trying to buy another triple clamp all I have to do is just clean it with a little bit of a carb cleaner get it nice and clean. The bearing doesn't move on this part, it's actually a fixed position. It's just a little bit of a deposit. And now the fun stuff. If you look online, people are having all kinds of strategies how to grease a bearing with putting special gloves and all kind of fluffy stuff when all you have to do is just make sure that the grease gets in there. So as you can see, there's a little groove over here that you could shove the grease in there. You could put grease on the outside. You could push grease through this little groove over here. All you need is just make sure that the bearing has grease once it's cleaned and it will work just fine. The truth is that it's very intimidating when you see a guy with a blue glove and a green glove and shows you how to put the things together and it makes you don't want to do it. But in essence, as long as you have grease on it, it doesn't matter what kind of a glove or how much strategy or what kind of a technique you have. YouTube is a platform of entertainment. People want to see this kind of stuff because it's fun, but at the end of the day, it kind of like deters you from doing this yourself. As long as you have grease in this thing, that's all that matters. It doesn't matter if you use your feet to put it on. And here's my little trick. The bottom bearing doesn't matter how good you pack it. If you put stuff on top, when it gets warm, it will just leak inside the bearing and this seal will keep it in there. So this entire bearing will, will work over the grease that is on top. So that's my strategy for the bottom bearing. Just shove it in here, right? And then the top bearing is exactly the reverse. So the bearing needs to be greased on top and then you put this little cap on top and it keeps the grease in there and it will go through. And people will absolutely hate me saying this, but you're supposed to put a certain torque spec on that bolt. Unfortunately, because sometimes you don't have the right tools and you don't want to spend $200 in tools for a $50 job, you have to use one of these. But how are you going to measure the torques? Well, I'm not going to measure the torques. And I know you're going to hate me for this, but all you have to do is just get that knot tight enough where this one doesn't play, but it's still loose enough to be able to move around. The dealer, right about now, we're trying to sell you another radiator guard because look, scraping on it. But guess what? I'm just going to cut this little edge over here off and I'm good to go. There will be people over there asking, well, why is it touching? Because it's not supposed to touch. And that's true. 
but I've been crashing on this bike a couple of times and I have radiator braces that are not stuck. They are like a universal ones and a little inch here and a little inch there and it can make a difference. So now that I guessed the torque specifications for this little nut over here, which I just moved a little bit more, it's time to put the top part of the triple clamp on and see how it's gonna feel. And here it is, everything is assembled. You have a nice feel to it. So this feels really, really good. One thing that is disappointing about this Yamaha is no hydraulic clutch and I don't want to spend eight or nine hundred dollars to put one on. And why am I saying that is if you look at the clutch uh, cable over there, every time I move, look how much it moves in. You see? Because it's a cable. So it needs to have a certain length and with the spacers and everything on the handlebars, it definitely affects the way that the clutch cable works. And if you stay with me all the way over here, you've noticed I haven't branded myself today. I didn't want to get my, my shirt dirty, it's in the washer. Um, the handlebars feel really, really good. Um, just a matter of uh, going riding and enjoying. Saved a bunch of money. Here's the footage that I promised you. <sighs> Gotta let them take the dust. Let the dust settle because you can enjoy it if you if you ride right behind them. So this this is totally worth it. This all the all the trails should be like this. They should buy a special machine that does this.
<laughs> Too much fun. Too much fun.